Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be taking a look at the Lantra Ride On Mower course. Well then, Jimmy the Mower doing a Ride On Mower course. Who'd have thought he and why, eh? But I'll tell you why. It's because I've been in this industry 15 years or so and I've been using Ride On Mowers for a lot of that time. And you know what? I don't have any formal qualifications in this area. I really don't. Now, I know it's quite brave of me to say, to stick my head above the parapet and say that, but it's common knowledge. I walk around these shows, we chat about it. A lot of people get into our industry, um, not really by design, not by accident either. They just sort of come into it, find themselves at home, enjoy what they do, and, and they just carry on from there. There's a lot of... Um, sort of peer-to-peer -peer learning within the industry, you learn off other people. We have a big community across social media and we all swap ideas and, and things like that and it's great. But when you're coming to running your own business like I do, you need to have these sort of things in place. Now, for insurance purposes, you have to show due diligence. Now for due diligence, one of the best ways to do that is have the correct certificates, okay? So I was talking about this sort of stuff with the guys at Lantra and they said, Jimmy, we do a ride on mower course. Why don't you just come and do it with us, right? You can come and have, come and do the course and show everybody how accessible it is and how sort of informative you found it. And I thought, well, it's a bit of anxiety inducing really because uh, after 15 years of sort of driving, you wouldn't want to go back and do your driving test again, would you? So scared about all the new legislation and things that have changed and whatever else, but Saying that, there's a lot of things within that course that I did know already. And as an operator, you will know as well. Um, everyday things that we put into practice that you just probably don't think about on a daily basis, but you do already. And if you're a new operator in the industry, then you get this workbook. And in this workbook, there are so many things in there to help you out. It's a great guide, really. I've referred back to it several times. You can see probably how dirty it is. This has just been in the truck since, and we're still looking at bits and pieces um, as we go about our day-to-day -day business. So for experienced or, or, or new operators alike, it's a great course. Now, you're probably worried about a lot of form filling and that sort of thing. There isn't that either. Um, I've got the video here. We'll go through. We went along. We filmed it all. I'm not going to give too much of the course away but um, just a bit of an overview about what we did and how it went. But I must say, the, the person who was training me, Alan, was a great guy, put me at ease straight away. You can probably see on the video now as we walk in, in fact, I'll watch this video in real time with you. So you can see that I'm a little bit nervous when I walk in. Um, filming, I do that all the time, workshop videos, MOA videos, that's it. Training videos, we don't really do them. And also when I'm there and under pressure to learn, they've got the top chap from Lantra there, a trainer there, Jimmy the Mower doing a ride on mower course. There's a lot of pressure. But anyway, I walked in, sat down with Alan and he said, right, there you go, Jimmy. We've got a mug of tea there for you. We've got a glass of water, some biscuits on the table. Help yourself. Now, I just run through the fire instructions and he went through that sort of thing. So that's what you'll have when you first walk into your course, right? Nice and easy, nice and relaxed, nice and informal. Sat there, had a chat. Now, as things carried on, we just normally started chatting about mowers and, and work and what we do and how he does his training and how I do my work and things like that, which was great really because we sat there and we're just chatting and he put me at ease straight away. So I was quite happy. Now, on the desk in front of me, there's a few forms and we've got to fill those forms in. Now, you're a bit apprehensive about filling in forms, nothing to worry about. They have your registration number already, so they can pre-fill that for you. You've just got to literally put your name in there, your address in there, um, postcode and stuff, and your date of birth. So nothing complicated at all. There's no real bother, right? So they're easy enough. We filled in the forms, and then we started to have a look at this little workbook. So I'll just move along to the, that bit. Now we've got the workbook out now. When we got the workbook out, this is, this is the sign of a good teacher, right? We got the workbook out and we're chatting informally. I'm sat there looking through it, just flicking through it, jotting some stuff down as we go through different sections, chatting about things that I do, he does, how it should be done, you know, that sort of thing. And as this is going on, the next thing you know, he turns around to me and said, great, that's modules one and two complete. 
And I was like, right, okay, modules one and two completed already. Yeah, we've done it, Jimmy. We've sat here and we've talked about it and I'm happy that you have the knowledge that's required for modules one and two. I thought, wow, what a great start, what a great start. So we went through that. We had another cup of tea and another chat. Um, we went a little bit more through a few more things in the workbook and, and things like that. And one of the, uh, the, the things that caught my eye really was talking about fuel and transportation of fuel. Now, we all move fuel around um, for mowers, strimmers, dedge cutters, whatever you're using in your daily work. So, and there's actual limits into what you, what you can have in a van, on a trailer and wherever else. So in reality, if you fill everything up before you go to work, you don't have to carry a lot around with you, but there is legislation surrounding it. Now, I wasn't fully aware of this or fully aware of the limits. So that's something I definitely did learn. And I'm not gonna give you the specifics here and now because they do change when the regulations change. So whenever you go to do your course, it's the regulations at that time that you have to adhere to, okay? But there are limits. So I wasn't shocked, but I didn't think it would be as low as it was. But, you know, that's a different thing. So talking of fuel, we then went outside. Um, we went outside and, and the chaps from Ego had turned up. Now, they came there with their battery stuff. They're famous for their battery stuff, aren't they, Ego mowers? They turned up and um, they got a, a zero turn mower. And with their zero turn mower, they've got, it's all battery powered. Um, and we stood there and had a, a chat about the batteries. Um, I couldn't quite believe that these little batteries run a zero turn mower, but they do, and they run it quite well. Um, so we went through the batteries, how they charge up, how they work, because this is an extension of fuel. Um, and as far as I'm aware, there's no actual limit on the amount of batteries you can carry. Oh, you know, I stand to be corrected if you know better, but as far as I'm aware, that's that's what it is. So you got the batteries there. We talked about how the batteries can be stored. You have petrol, the petrol can go off over time and it's not so great for long-term storage. However, the batteries can be stored and with a lithium ion, they can be charged up and, and held at like, I think they do go through a small cycle when they're stored and they, they reduce themselves down to about 90%, I think, when they're stored, but anyway. They're stored and then talking about charging, because obviously you need a lot of batteries for the day, you can take a lot with you. You can charge them up individually, or as you can see there, they put them all inside the actual mower bonnet at the back or where the engine compartment would be at the back. And you can put the batteries in there and you can charge all the batteries at once. So if you've done your days mowing, strimming, whatever you're doing, put it all in there, take it back and charge it up. That's a pretty safe way of doing things. I'll, I'll agree with that. but. For the larger mowers that I use um, and the larger areas that we cover, I'm cutting multiple sports pitches per day where we need to be sort of still using the, the diesel powered machines. So we need to be aware of the legislation around the diesel stuff and things like that. So that was great. We've been through the classroom. We've been through the, uh, the, the battery powered stuff. Now it was time to get my mower off my trailer and have a look at that. Now, <laughs> One of the modules in there is safe transportation. Obviously I've taken this mower here. I'm fairly competent in, in what I know and confident in what I do. So we've got the, the mower strapped onto the trailer. The ramp is up vertical. We've got extra stays on the ramp as well, just to belt and braces approach. Okay. Now chatting with Alan and these things that you would probably do automatically, but he just reminded me that we have to do things in a certain order. So we're on a slight incline with the trailer leaning backwards. So we would take the back strap off first, the rear strap off first, right? So the rear strap's off, and then with the rear strap off, we've got the, the it's still secured on the front strap. So if we took the front strap off and there was a problem, the mower would roll off and we're not standing behind it, right? So. You're mindful of that and you'll probably always do that anyway, but it's just making sure we do this. So that's how we took those off. Then you've got to move the mower off the trailer. So we're moving the mower off the trailer. First thing we have to do is put the rollover protection system up, right? Now we have that down for when we're transporting the mower because it adds extra height to the vehicle um, when we're moving around. So we have that down when we're, when we're moving around. So before we can actually move the, the mower off, we put the roller protection system up. Well, with the mower off the uh, trailer and 
the cutting heads down. You can see me demonstrating a perfect three-point dismount. Now, the three-point dismount, it's not a joke. <laughs> it, it is something actually three-point three points of contact for getting on and off a mower at all times all right so one hand on the on my particular machine the ransoms parkway we have one hand on the rollover protection system one hand on the steering wheel and a foot on the tread plate there so when we get on the mower we get on forwards and we sit down in the seat and then when we want to get off the mower we don't just turn around and jump off we have to dismount properly three points of contact and step off it backwards in a safe manner right might sound a, a bit daft, but you'll do it anyway. This is what we do when we're out and about mowing. You just do these things naturally. It's just when they're written down or pointed out to you, it, it's quite hard to think that that's what you do every day without realising it. So when we're off the mower, go and get our PPE on, our gloves and stuff, because we've got to have a look at, at everything that's on there. So the first thing is a visual inspection. So we walk around the, the mower and we have a look at, at everything that's that's on there. So we, we have a look really at the hydraulic pipes, um, make sure there's no leaks underneath the mower, make sure there's no water, oil, hydraulic oil, etc. Um, no visible damage to the pipes, that the wing mirrors are all in, in good order. Now, I talk in there with Alan about the diesel, right? And my diesel tank is full and it's a plastic tank which minimises the contamination of diesel because when diesel sits in a metal tank and it's only half full, you can get condensation in there because diesel returns the tank, all right? So the stuff returns the tank. So you, you're warming up the diesel as you go and you can get a bit of condensation. We walked around, continued our visual inspection, made sure everything was all right. And then it was time to pop the bonnet. Now, that bit was a little bit embarrassing. It's a working machine and we've been out constantly mowing. Uh, we had a lot of stuff to do. We had a big build up to a huge event and we've been busy ever since. It's been taking a while to catch up. So but anyway, it wasn't as clean as I would have liked, but we popped the bonnet and uh, we had a look in there. Now, general engine maintenance, don't get hung up or worried about this sort of thing because it's all in the book and these are, these are things that will be done and you'll get used to doing them on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, okay? It's best to have, if you can, a little book where everything's written down or a computer system if you have one to write everything down. But basically, you, your daily checks are before you use your mower, you need to check the air filter and make sure it's clear. On my machine, I've got a little indicator on top uh, which tells you whether it's clear or not, but it doesn't hurt uh, to ever take that off and just have a look. You check the oil level and you check the coolant level, okay? Those are all in the engine bay. At the side of the engine bay, you've got the hydraulic um, oil and there's a gauge on the top there and you just make sure that that is where it should be in the green. Once these are all in place and done, everything's at an agreeable level, you've done your visual check, you can then move around and start to look at the cutting heads. So I'll just uh, get the get the video up with the cutting heads. Now we've got the cutting heads up and they're all in place where they should be. Now, the reason we lift those up is because on my machine, lift them up, there's an auto cut off. So when they're up, even if the machine's running and you press go on the cutting blades, they will not turn and they will not operate, okay? It's one of the safety, well, in fact, two safety features. You'll learn all about safety features in this workbook and you'll know a lot of them already. The one where you've got the, the switch on the seat. If you're sat in the seat, if you're not sat in the seat, you can't move the mower, right? If you're not sat in the seat, you can't turn the cutting units on. If the cutting units are set up, you can't turn them on either. So we've got two fail safes there, three fail safes. One, the machine isn't running. Two, there's nobody in the seat. And three, even if the, it was running and somebody was sat in the seat with them in the upright position, they wouldn't turn on, right? So. Now we've got that established, we need to check that they're, they're in good order. So I've got a little brush that we use. Uh, I use it for cleaning the mower off, cleaning grass off myself as well. And it's got a nice wooden handle on there. We can put that into the cylinders and we can turn that round. And as we turn it round, we can check each blade as it comes down. And we'll check the bottom bed knife as well, right? Which is great, you make sure that they're all true. Now, check them all including the one underneath. You have to get down on the floor for that one and check that one as well. But you check it, make sure they're all in good order. 
I'm assuming they're in good order because if you're the person that's driving the machine and you were driving it the previous day, you would know if you'd hit something and you needed something to repair. But you just need to check every time because somebody might have taken the machine out, might have got knocked in the workshop, etc. So you just have a look. Then we're getting close to the exciting bit now. We have to go on and look at the ground that we cut in. Now, before you cut any grass, again, you'll do this without realising it. You'll pull up somewhere, you'll open the gate, you'll have a quick scan around the field, the area that you're cutting, right? There's a bottle over there, a can over there, there's some children playing, etc., etc. You go and have a look, you pick up any debris, you move it out of the way, you ask the people if they'd like to move to one side so you can carry on with the job that you're doing, and you go and do it. However, on this little patch of grass here, there wasn't a lot, a few sticks and twigs. I think I found one stone, that was it, but... I lifted my cutties up accordingly. So I was cutting a little bit higher. So I knew that anything that we hadn't seen in the grass below, I'd be able to just skim over the top and we wouldn't touch and damage my cylinders because I've got to go to work the next day and uh, earn some money with this mower. So we cleared all of that off there. But one thing we did know when I'm going round, are there are some low branches, right? Now, we talked about PPE. You need your gloves, your glasses, your work boots, etc. right, seat belt on, all of that sort of stuff. Now, there's some low branches on here, and I've been hit a couple of times at low branches, and let me tell you, you've got a rollover protection system, you come through those branches, they pull them back, push them forward, and whack, and they hit hard, right? So whenever I'm cutting under trees, you'll see me in photographs, videos, whatever I'm doing, with a hard hat on. Now, it's an arborist hat, but I take the visor off, so I have my hard hat on and I have my glasses on. Now, I always have glasses on. I'm very cautious with my eyes. I always have safety specs on. Now, they're clear on a dull day like today, or there can be shades, but most of the time, or well, all the time on a mower, really, you'll see me with glasses on. But the hard hat on, that will just protect your head. It seems a bit overkill, I know, but believe me, it hurts when you don't have one on and it's worth having one on, right? So all suited and booted, ready to go. And then the exciting bit is now upon us, I jump on the mower. Now, I'll tell you something, I was nervous and I mean really nervous. Um, if you just watch me pull up onto the, the grass here, you can see how nervous I am. I've been doing this for years. Everybody knows I can do it. Every, I mean, I've even cut the grass at Wembley, but to go and cut this patch of grass in front of two people who are assessing you, it's a nerve wracking thing. So I pulled up on there anyway and uh, started to cut the grass. Before I, I did cut the grass, I just moved forward. I just made sure that the machine was all all, all right. Dropped the cutters down, fired them up, started to move forward slowly. You can see me lifting up the arms when we're going past certain objects and obstacles, lifting up the arms just to demonstrate that I know what I'm doing and I know how to operate the machine. Now, one of the things I was worried about is a lot of the time I drive one-handed and I use my left hand and my right hand on the controls. And I did ask about this and they said, you know what, you're in full control of the machine, you've got your hand on there because that's what operates those arms. So that is what you need to do, that's great. If you're on long stretches, things down, two hands on the wheel, and observing everything around you. So I was happy with that, and that put me at ease as well. So I cut the grass, I was happy with it, I thought, at least I've done this right, so we're all done. And then we got off the mower, and we had a little bit of a chat um, about what had gone on, and put the mower back onto the trailer and strapped it up. Now, there's all different videos that I'll be doing about transporting mowers and things like that, so I won't go into depth here, but it is all in the booklet if you need to have a look. Then, we went back inside, right? We had to do a couple more little bits of paperwork first, but we had an informal chat, a cup of tea and another biscuit, just to put me at ease, really. Because it's all right doing this thing day in, day out, but you need to be sort of put back to rest after you've sat there and done it in front of assessors and stuff. So calm down and we had a bit of a chat. And then it was time to move on to the formal assessment. Right. As I said, I was nervous after doing the mowing, um, needed a bit of calming down, I was nervous about the assessment. Sat there, had another cup of tea, some biscuits, um, had an informal chat again. Got the uh, assessment sheet out, filled in name and number again on the assessment sheet, and had a little chat, uh, if there was anything that I needed to go through, anything that I was unsure of, so we just had a quick flick through the, the workbook with everything in, and just made sure that I was pretty confident in, in everything that, 
that we've got to do. However, I don't know what comes up in the, the exam, do I? But you, you have to look at it. Now, with the exam itself, it's a multiple choice um, exam paper, right? Now, I tend to struggle a little bit with these because I can think of a scenario that would fit every single answer, all right? So don't get worried if multiple choice isn't your thing. The way I cope with it is I cover up the answers and I read the question and I read it out and I think of my answer and I think, right, and then I look down the options and I go, right, that one fits, that's what it should be, right? Don't overthink these things, it's that answer. If you're not great at reading, um, don't worry about that either. They can sit there and they can read out the question, ask you for an answer and they can read the possible answers and you can match them up. So, you know, it's accessible for everybody, that's what I'm saying. Now, as I went through, it was pretty straightforward and it sort of followed the course book as we went through, which was great. However, there were a couple of ones I got stuck on um, about halfway and I was a little bit worried, but I put a star by them and I carried on. So I carried on doing the other the questions and as you did the other questions, they sort of answered the questions before, if that makes sense. So you think, ah, right, that relates to that. Go back to that question and you can fill that in because you've got that knowledge in there. You've been through it all in the book. You just need to unlock it. So I went through there and I got to the end of the, the exam paper and I thought rather than just saying I've finished I'll go back and I'll start again now I know I was on one-to-one -one training I couldn't get any help from anybody there I just had to sit there and do it myself and uh, and do and so I went back and I made sure I answered everything and I got what I thought was the correct answer to everything and then it went off to be marked so chance for another cup of tea and a biscuit while it was being marked and a bit of a chat just well explaining really how I'd did the paper and sometimes I struggle with these things as a lot of people do, there's no shame in that. So we, we chatted about that and then the paper came back and it pleased to tell me I'd passed. So what a relief that was <laughs> with somebody one-to-one -one training all day and one of the top people from Lantra there with me. I was uh, pretty nervous about passing it, but I did it. And uh, that's, you know, thanks to uh, Alan there at Countryside Training for all the help and going through it all and explaining everything so well. I really appreciate that. And thanks to Lantra as well for letting us film because I'm trying to open up this course to people that maybe wouldn't do it. You know, if you've been in the industry a long time, you feel that you don't need to do these. I suggest that you can do it, you know, go and do them in the winter, fill your time up, go there, learn something. You'll meet other people who are doing this sort of course. So you make contacts as well. You'll learn a lot from the booklet. You get the booklet to take away. We've referred back to this several times and there's actually notes in the back that I'd written and there's notes on different pages and things about different things. So stuff for us to look at when we got back. So it was really enjoyable. I enjoyed the day. It was a bit nervous for the filming and things because we've never filmed a training course before and I had to do the training course as well. But it was great. If you were going there, there'll be other people there. Um, you have a bit of camaraderie. If you're going from work and you've got work colleagues there, then I'm sure it'd be fun and you'll have a, a great chat amongst yourselves as well as uh, sort of swapping knowledge on the mowers and things like that. So all in all, I really enjoyed it. And what's more important is I got my certificate and I'm now safe to use these machines. So thanks again to Lantra. Thanks again to Alan at Countryside Training. Um, please go and have a look at all their websites. You can see all the training courses that are available to you. And uh, get booked on one today.